Good morning. Today we have a Wraith player, David Mackay, here with us. So good morning, Dave. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, so when did you start playing football? Um, from when I can remember, probably like four or five. Started. I just played like locally. Um, there was like a training camp thing I used to go to when I was younger. Um, my local team, Broxburn. And then I just started playing um, just it was five a sides or whatever it was when I was younger. Just done that and it just built up seven a sides, nine a sides and so on. Yeah. And who inspired you when you started playing football and as you kept like progressing through like obviously different teams and stuff? Just like, I just loved like watching football on the telly. Um, and obviously, I just I just want to be doing what they were doing. Um, all my all my friends played football. Um, used to just go out and play in the street, so it was just normal. It was just what I knew. And obviously, I enjoyed doing it, so I made it better. So you like you wouldn't say you have like a specific a specific role model growing up uh, when you studied. Um, I loved watching Ronaldinho play. I know he's not the same position as me, but. Yeah, I loved watching him play, but he was probably the person that, like, I don't know, I just loved watching him play. I just thought he was so good to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you signed for Wraith in 2016 after coming through Hibernian's Academy. What differences yeah. did you first notice in playing style when you made the move? Well, obviously, like, everyone knows academy football is different, and I was at Hibs maybe until I was 16. I think it was 16 I left Hibs. Um, left the academy so I was nowhere near the first team and then obviously it was Laurie Ellis who brought me into Wraith Rovers and I'd never trained with a first team before and because there wasn't many um, young boys like apprentices is that, if that's what you want to call it um, I was basically chucked in straight to the deep end training with the first team and it's just there's, there's a big difference because academy football it's just it's not the same because people aren't getting paid and whatever and he jumps into a first team training so full on, and I like ever since I started training with the first team, I was learning so much every single day, and it was so good for me and so good for my development as well. So, would you say like is like this both physically and like technically, it's a huge change obviously from academy football and jumping making that jump into first team? Oh yeah. 100% the physicality, you notice that like you're training with people that are the same same sort of size as you. And then obviously when I came into Rafe, I'm training with like men. Um, so the physicality side was, it took a bit of getting used to. Um, but definitely the physicality side, yeah. How hard was it to adapt to that change when you were 16? It was very hard. Um, but it done me the world of good. The more, obviously, every single day I was training, getting more used to things, um, starting to use my body a lot more. Um, and obviously, with the gym and that physically developing myself, standing myself in good stead. So, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, definitely the best way to go. You were part of the yeah. squad that achieved promotion to the championship in the 2019 20 season. How much work is there behind a great season like the one a uh, Wraith had that year? Oh, lots of work. Um, lots and lots of work. Lots of training. And obviously the way we got promoted wasn't the way we wanted to get promoted, but like obviously COVID hit and it is what it is. And we were up the top of the table from um majority of the league. Um, so I thought it was only fair that we went up. Obviously, you'd want to go up in normal circumstances. But um, it shows you, like, we're consistent. We're always consistent at the top of the table. So, if anything, I think we deserve to go up. Although it wasn't the way you'd want to go up. No, I definitely deserve to go up. Though, like, not only did you, obviously, like, win the league, achieve promotion, you were also, like, joint uh, league, um, Challenge Cup uh, champions and stuff. So Yeah. Like, that was unfortunate that game couldn't get played because that would have been a good one to, to do, obviously, with the promotion and then, a good chance at the cup as well, but it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, but definitely still a great run through that season as well. 
And like yeah, you said, it, it showed like your consistency throughout the whole season. Yeah, hundred percent. In February 2020, you unfortunately had a major setback in your career after injuring your ACL that mm. you then, because of COVID, couldn't get an operation on until August that same year. How hard is it both mentally and physically to have to go through an injury like that and like all the rehab behind it? Uh, it was very hard, to say the least. Um, obviously, I injured it in training. I remember it was before... I think it was Dumbarton away. I saw I jarred my knee, um, and obviously it swelled up and whatever. Um, but I thought it was just going to be like a, a little knock. I obviously didn't know the extent of my injury, and then so I was just kind of leaving it for like a week or so, just to hopefully the swelling goes down and get back training. Um, and that was obviously COVID started sort of the end of February, start of March. So. Basically, we were just off. We got told we were coming back training in two or three weeks. It turned out to be like three months. Um, so obviously, it was hard for me because I didn't know what was what was wrong with me. Yeah. And then obviously, I went and got my scan. Um, I think it was June, maybe June time. It's all a bit of a blur, to be honest, because it, it was ages ago. But I got my scan in June. Um, and obviously, I found out it was my ACL. I couldn't believe it. I didn't. I didn't feel it was. There was no pain. Like it was only when I went to change direction, my knee would sort of give way. Um, so that was really hard. Um, it took me a few days to like mentally get over it. But obviously, the first person I spoke to was Louis Vaughan because he's been through it. Um, He's been through all the rehab, so just looking for any advice. And Robbie Thompson as well, because I travelled through with him. Um, he done his Achilles, and he was out for sort of the same time as you would be for an ACL. So um, I had loads of support. It was just the first sort of couple of days, just kind of getting into my head that I won't be able to play again for probably nine months. Um, so that was a lot to take in. But when you've got boys like that around you, like Robbie and Louis, um, and obviously you've got your friends and your family as well they're supporting you the whole way but um, the rehab was was hard but I did enjoy it getting stronger feeling stronger again because that's the only sort of satisfaction you can get until you're back running and then obviously when the first day I was back running I remember it, it was a night time I was back running it felt so good just to get back out on the pitch and then as the months go on you start joining the warm up and then sort of like back into training, easing yourself back in. Um, so that was good, but it was, it was a long, hard uh, rehab, to say the least. Yeah, definitely. You had your contract extension uh, throughout like, your rehab time in the last season. Mm -hmm. Do you think that like kept you going, like that pushed you uh, to keep going and working hard on your rehab uh, like for that whole yeah. season? Yeah, obviously it is a bit um, security and that was good from the club to do that. It kind of put me, it was kind of like a weight off my shoulders and I could kind of just fire away when my rehab um, and I'm back when I'm back, so yeah. How has it felt getting back on the pitch this season after missing the return to the Championship due to your injury? Um, it's been so good just to be even, just to be back training again um, because... A lot of the rehab is in the gym, um, and it is is very hard going. It's not an easy rehab, like obviously building your strength back up, and it's just such a good feeling just to be able to go out and just get a training session done because it was I think it was sixteen months I couldn't train for, so um, just getting a good training session, um, and obviously getting back on the pitch, it felt good. It felt like I'd never been away, although it was so long. It felt like I'd never been away when I got back on. That first training session, like pre-season uh, training session you had, uh, it, you got like another small setback uh, when yeah. you done something to your hamstring, I think it was. Yeah, that's right. Uh, did, was it hard to like, after so long, obviously, because of your ACL, then uh, to like, know you've, you've done something something to your hamstring, was it hard like to get that new? Um. That was very frustrating. Um, obviously, we had time off between 
uh, sort of after the playoffs and back pre-season, but I was in three times a week um, with sports scientists and with Cami, who was with us last year. He was really good in my rehab, um, and I appreciate everything he done for me. Um, but I was in three times a week doing all my running, keep my fitness up, so I, I felt um, almost back to normal for the first day of pre-season. So it wasn't like I'd done nothing. Like I kept all my rehab going, and I was trying to get back up to speed. Um, and then in training, uh, I went to sprint. And obviously, in my head, like I, I assume that I'm just back training and I can just go back to where I was. But um, obviously not thinking about my knee. Um, and I've just went to sprint and I felt like a wee twinge in my hamstring. And I was thinking, like, surely not. Like, I'm just back. Like, this can't be happening. Um, but thankfully, it wasn't too bad. I was maybe out for... Um, 10, 11 days or whatever it was. But obviously that was hard because the first sort of two weeks of pre-season is when you get your hard running and that's probably what I needed at the time. But I got myself right and then I caught up with all the running as well. So I was training and then whatever running they had done, I was doing after as well, just to get my fitness back up. But obviously that was frustrating. Um, but I think that's normal for ACL um, injuries. You get like sort of tweaks here and there. Like that's just normal. Because I remember Louis saying he had some issues with his quad afterwards. But I got my, my actual ACL graft from my hamstring, so it could be connected to that. I don't know. But um, I'm feeling good now, so it's in the past. Yeah, definitely things to happen, especially after sitting so long out and stuff. Yeah, just getting going again. I just thought I could move how I used to. But I probably need to just do a little bit more before training than other boys would, just because obviously I need to watch from my, from my knee. Yeah, definitely. You're currently sitting fifth on the table with a with a game in hand. How have you seen the team so far this season? Um, I think we've been good. I think we've defended really well. Um, lots of clean sheets. Obviously, apart from the four when we were four nil up against Hamilton and conceding four uh, goals in twenty odd minutes or whatever it was. Apart from that, I think we've been really good. Um. Also a good cup run. Um, we we show that we've showed that we can compete with the Premiership teams, um, and obviously we have still got that game in hand. So if you win that, you climb the table again. So, but it's like I said, it's it's early days, but um, I think we're looking good this season. Yeah, I think especially since obviously like the whole squad have last season in mind and how you weren't able to like celebrate that with the fans mm -hmm. uh, I think you said all wanting to like do the same again this season in front of uh, supporters and stuff 100% um, but I wasn't involved in the games um, last season with the no fans yeah. obviously because today but even watching the games like it just felt it didn't really feel right that there was no fans there um, and obviously you seen it at the Aberdeen game. The atmosphere was brilliant. Um, Dunfermline game. And ev every game, really, to be fair. But um, it was really good to have the fans back, back playing in front of a crowd. Um, just kind of back to normal. Yeah. You have a tough game against Celtic in the Cup this week. Do you feel like the outcome of this game can affect uh, the team's performance towards Sunday's game against uh, Partick? Um. The game on, on Thursday, like, we've showed that we can compete um, with Aberdeen. We competed with Levy as well. And in the past few seasons, we have competed with Premiership teams. Everyone knows, like, obviously, how big a club Celtic are. But you see the result against Livingston shows that they're not impossible to beat. So we'll go give it our best shot. And then we're looking forward to Thursday. And after Thursday, we're looking forward to Sunday. So, uh, you don't think like it'll, it'll have any effect? Like, when or lose on Thursday, it's like it starts a clean sheet before Sunday. Yeah, like, it's like whatever happens, um, whatever happens, we need to move on. Um, the league's the most important thing. So, um, whatever happens on Thursday, we'll see what happens and then take it from there. Yeah.
September has been a busy month for you, and you're going to finish off with Celtic away uh, and Partick and Unferman at home in the space of six days. Yeah. Do you feel like so many games so close together can put you at a uh, disadvantage going on to uh, like these games and all the October fixtures? Um, I feel like as a, as a lot of games. Um, so you just need to make sure you're what you're doing away from training is right. Um, obviously, in between games, we won't be training as hard as we normally would. It'd probably just be more a recovery session and just making sure you're right for the games. Um, but I would, I'd rather play games all the time. Like, that's what you want to do is play games. Like, it is a lot in a short space of time, but we're, we're all looking forward to it. Yeah. And you certainly see that happening in, like, other leagues as well, where you get, like, a, a load of like midweek games or like teams playing like Europe and stuff they get like midweek mm-hmm. games so yeah well, just like like I said like recovering between games will be so important and make, making sure you feel as close to 100, 100% as you can leading up to the next game yeah what message do you have for Rovers fans this season? Um, obviously we'd, we'd obviously like to be higher up in the table as we are, um, than we are, sorry. Um, but just just stay behind us. Um, all the boys always give 100%. And hopefully we can go one better than last year and hopefully um, win promotion. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, you've been at Wraith for five years, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. Five yeah. and a half years. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What's your best memory of Wraith so far? My best memory? Yeah. Um, hmm, there's, been, there's been a few. Probably making my debut, that was good. Um, I remember, I think it was away up to, I think it was Bucky Thistle in a, a, pre, like a cup, whatever, um, at the start of the season. Uh, but obviously making your, your debut, like you never you never forget that your professional debut. Um I enjoyed the cup one away to St. Mirren. That was ages ago. Um pro I'd say I'd say making my debut, hundred percent. Definitely like one of like the like, most important moments, especially since like your debut for Wraith was like your professional debut as well. Yeah. And I remember my first professional goal as well. It was a header at um, home at Stranraer. And also I also enjoyed my goal against Elgin. I remember it dropped from the edge of the box, just smashed on the half volley. And that was good. Obviously celebrating all the fans as well. What advice would you give to young kids making their way through various academies that want to make it professional someday? Um, just, just enjoy playing football. Like that's the main thing. You, you need to enjoy it, and I think if you're enjoying it, you're you're gonna train better, play better as well, um, and just work hard. Like sometimes you are gonna get setbacks, but it's how you how you react to them. Um, and I'd say just work hard and have a good attitude. Uh, just to finish off, then, uh, what would you say is the best thing football has given you throughout your full career? Like when you started, when you were like four or five to where you are now at 23? Um, the best moment, would you say? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, the best thing. No, like the best thing I, like football has given you in general. Doesn't have to be that um, moment precisely. Obviously, all the boys you meet, um, you meet a lot of people who are, are friends for life. Um, I'd say that, but I'd say probably the, the most satisfaction I've had was probably signing my first professional contract. Um, I'd say that's got to be up there. Um, but obviously, I love um, like meeting new people, being around new people, and that learning of um, older, um, experienced players and trying to take stuff into my game from their game, like bits and pieces from different people. Um, so I'd say that, yeah. Uh, and see when you're playing obviously like you like to be in front of your uh, like your own supporters and stuff but see for big game it's obviously like the Aberdeen game you've already played the Celtic game you're going to get 
would you do you prefer to be home or away? Because obviously at home you have like your own supporters, like they're all there. But away, for example, against like Celtic, you get like much, much bigger ground, obviously, like the atmosphere is like different. Yeah. Um I'd say like I'd say anyone would say you'd rather be playing at home. But obviously I'll be good. I'll be a good experience. I've never played at Celtic Park, so it'll be good to go go there. I don't know how busy it'll be, but I'll I'll be more than what we're used to. But we've just got to focus on our own game. Don't let the the crowd affect how we play and just play our own game. Certainly. Well, I want to wish you all the best for like the upcoming season, especially like the long run of games you've got coming up just now. Uh, and hopefully that's you back to normal and uh, you can just keep getting into the game uh, as uh, the season goes along. Thank you very much. No, thank you so much for coming along to do this interview. Thank you. No worries.